Hi guys, just a couple of things. First of all, uh, I'm not sure how the owners of Dive Centre Bond are going to feel having me as their new owner. But I just thought I'd put that on the record right from the start. I used to own Dive Centre Bondi, but I no longer do, but thanks anyway for that. <laughs> Appreciate it. My next change, of course, will be to work this, so we're either going to get it, something going to be good or bad first up. Aha! So yeah, so normally um, it's unusual for me to be standing up here because business is normally seen to be the enemy. So first of all, thanks for the, uh, for the invitation. But we've been working very heavily at this point with some poor decisions that have been made by the New South Wales government and, and potentially by the South Australian government to change uh, some things. And I'll talk about those a little bit later. So what I'd really like to talk about today is the economic reality of marine sanctuaries. Because we've, we understand that you know, we need to look after fish, etc., etc. And I suppose this is our perspective on why we think these things are important. And also ways too, more importantly, that the dive industry can work alongside you guys and try and get a method for change. Because as we saw, um, um, you know, two, uh, two presentations ago, that it is a strange process. I mean, I obviously don't have Jeremy's vast expertise in it, but even the small bit that I've seen so far, um, you know, is a little bit yes ministerish for me, I think. So, it's, uh, so it's, it's interesting, and hopefully I can shed some light on some of that process as well. But just to give you some idea of, uh, of where we're coming from and what we are, um, there's over 350 specialised dive businesses uh, in Australia. We are a multi-billion dollar industry. I know people normally associate us with just a small little dive shop that's down the road, um, but we are a quite a powerful player at the end of the day. Um, and earlier on, I think uh, we said there's a few divers in Australia. Well, there is. There's 1.3 million divers in Australia, which I think will surprise the diving community that's out there. And in New South Wales alone, um, strangely enough, we've got the most. People often think of the Barrier Reef and they'd have the most, but, but we have the most local divers, and there's around about 400,000 divers that contribute an estimated about half a billion dollars to the economy. And our business and associated businesses employ about 5,000 people here in New South Wales. So it's, it's a reasonable business. And everyone's here going, oh my god, what's going on here? So when we went to see um, our uh, Grangegate Premier, um, he was actually prepared to listen to us, believe it or not. Now I'd like, first of all, to talk about the big marine park because everyone, you know, when they look at marine parks, think about the Great Barrier Reef. And it is iconically Australian, even though I too, like you know, a lot of the people here, am originally a boat person and uh, arrived here in, uh, in 1984. Well, actually, probably a fly person more than a bloke person. But this really is the economic powerhouse of marine parks. It is so Australian. It's, it's as Australian as Australia itself. It supports almost $6 billion in industry and 60,000 jobs. And that's why it's extraordinary to think at this point that it's under threat by a ridiculous government decision. But, you know, we're maybe not the forum for that. But, uh, but it is extraordinary. Now what we need to do is look at what we've got in New South Wales. So currently we've got six marine parks. Thanks, Will, for that uh, great little map earlier with them all on. We've got Cape Byron, the Solitary Islands, Lord Howe Island, Port Stephens, Great Lakes Marine Park, Jarvis Bay and Batemans Bay. And when, interestingly, we started talking to people about marine parks, they said, oh yeah, we think, yeah, no, we think there's quite a, there's, we've got a lot in New South Wales, haven't we? So I thought today we might want to discuss the actual reality of what we have got. A few people have sort of almost given the game away, but let's, uh, let me press on regardless. So currently, only 7% of our New South Wales waters are uh, protected. That's all we've got. Looks like we've got lots of marine parks, but we don't actually have much protected at this point. So if you're a fisherman, you can fish in 93% of it. In fact, currently under the amnesty, which covers about half the area of those marine parks, we've only got about 3% protected from fishing at this point. And we saw earlier on how important it was. So really, I don't think at the end of the day, we're asking for a huge amount. But because the New South Wales government allowed or created an amnesty on fishing in marine parks, 
As a dive industry, we were appalled by this decision. So we uh, put together, along with our conservation partners, a, a dive industry galaxy poll. It was completely independent. It asked lots of uh, what we thought were important questions. And we got lots of information. This isn't the, the full galaxy poll by any means. This is just a few things that I thought would be important for everyone in this room. First of all, 93% of the population support marine sanctuaries. So even though you may feel you're out there working on your own, that you've got an enormous amount of support out there, including 91% of recreational fishermen. So nine out of 10 fishermen actually agree with marine sanctuaries. When we get some more figures later, it becomes even more bewildering what's going on. And the support for marine sanctuaries was consistent across all demographic groups. So this wasn't a galaxy poll of divers. This was a galaxy poll of people done by Galaxy themselves using their normal modelling. And normally most polls that are produced cover about 400 people and there's specific questions to get the answers you wanted. And ours was a generic poll and we polled in excess of 1,000 people. We also did, though, ask a question about the negative impacts on the economy of fishing in marine sanctuaries, and 84% of, of the people that replied said they'd be concerned about a negative impact of if fishing was permanently allowed in marine sanctuaries. I thought that was you know, good information to, to be out there as well. And then this is the one that I really love. Only 5% of recreational fishers support fishing in marine sanctuaries. So we've now got a decision based on 5% of recreational fishermen. That's not 5% of the New South Wales population. This is like 0.1% of the New South Wales population. Support this, this current deal that's, that's in place, which hopefully we think may well be turned over. We'll talk about that a bit later too. So we asked the question, what did people think was reasonable to have as a marine sanctuary? And on average, most people said about one-third. So at the moment we've got 7%. If you included all of Sydney, you'd probably get up to about 15%. And at the moment we've got a third of the public think that we should, or we should have a third of our marine environment protected by sanctuaries. 30% of the population think it should be more than 40%. And only 6%, pretty close to the, probably all of the... Um, Recreational fishermen that voted, voted here as well. Only 6% think it should be less than 10%. And that's what we've currently got. Less than 10%. So when you look at it in those terms, there's a lot of popular support for what you want to do in the general population. You're not, you know, by any means a bunch of greenies or, or nutters or anti-fishers out there in the wilderness crying, look, give us some more, give us some more. And also I think what we can see is it's not unreasonable. You're not really asking for much at the end of the day when you, when you put it in those terms. You know, often you think, oh, you know, if I just get this little bit, I'll be happy. But you're not really asking for a lot. Now, I didn't know whether this was a bit controversial or not, so I just called it dead or alive, what's it worth? But marine sanctuaries do make great economic sense. And international tourists who visit marine sanctuaries spend over twice as much as other visitors. And depending on the quality of the sanctuary and, the, and its rareness, it can be up to seven times as much as a normal visitor. So there's something really specific there, you know, seals or minke whales or whatever, then, all, then it can be a lot, lot more. They also in greatly increase business turnover and employment. In Coffs Harbour alone, the Solitary Islands Park increases business annually by, by over three million dollars and increases employment in a regional area. And that's why it's so extraordinary that this decision was made, you know, just arbitrarily. So, that, so they, they, they're good for business, is really what we're saying. They also help put our tourist towns firmly on the tourist map. And once you're on the tourist map, there's a driver to go there, not dissimilar to Bondi Beach. If you take the Bondi Beach thing out of Bondi, where's the driver to come here? No offence to anyone that lives in Bondi. Sorry, Will. No offence, man. I'm asleep. Yeah. They help make fishing more sustainable. I think a lot of fishermen appreciate this, and certainly, you know, in the dive, you know, the dive movement, we see this all the time because I, I really appreciate the science that we've heard, but we see it every day. It's like our office. It's a bit like someone that commutes 
into the city every day knows when it's school holidays. Because all of a sudden there's half the cars, isn't there? And you can park everywhere you want. And then other times you can't. They also provide insurance against mis mismanagement by creating a buffer zone. Because we don't always get it right, do we? You know, plans are made, they don't always go as they, they planned. You know, I'm sure if people could look back now, they probably wouldn't have let that little box of cane toads out and things. So, you know, mistakes do get made, and this helps if those mistakes are made. They also help rebuild the fish stocks, because fish grow larger. And then, once they've grown larger and they're bred, one and one area is full up, then they start to disperse. It's not that we've got one area here that's chock-a-block full of fish, and then this little area here has none in it. They swim out. And fishermen often use that argument. They say, oh, what's the point of a marine park? Because fish swim around anyway. Well, that's the whole point. That if you protect them, they, the little ones can be big ones, and then the big ones can swim. And then you can, if you want to, you can catch them. Because we're not asking for everything to be protected. But there needs to be some areas that have to be protected. Because... We dive all over the world, and I've been diving the, the world's reefs now for 30 plus years, as have all my customers. And what's happening out there is tragic. You know, and there's all this sensationalism about lots of things, but you can believe you me, fish are disappearing at a rapid rate, and coral reefs are dying all over the world. And there's nothing now as good as there was 20 years ago. Even brand new areas, Roger Armpat, you can, you know, you can talk about loads of these areas that have been touted. This is what diving was like. None of it's like it was 20 years ago. It's all disappearing, and it's disappearing rapidly. And we need to do something, because otherwise there is going to be nothing left. We can't just keep taking. We have to start protecting. And I suppose on a, on a, when we look, if we need to talk about science, I think you know, we should do. There's a lot more people here, a lot more scientific than me, but I just ask my scientific buddies. You know, what's been going on? They say, well, there's over a thousand scientific papers published on the benefits of marine sanctuaries in the last decade alone. When we asked the scientific community for some help, we said, look, we know these sanctuaries are a great idea because we see lots more fish. Then we swim over here and we don't see as many fish. How can, what, what can you do? And we got over 220 scientists that lent their support to removing the amnesty on recreational fishing in marine sanctuaries. And 80% of our marine species in New South Wales are unique to Australia. So it's not as though you can see them anywhere else. You know, they're, they're here and they're Australian. So the science only really supports what common sense tells us. And if you're a diver, you know exactly what you're talking about. If you go to my favourite little spot, Cabbage Tree Bay, which I myself and Judy, a lot of us, love desperately, you can absolutely see the difference. You don't need to, to count fish, you can see there's more fish. So we need to fully protect some of these key areas for the future. Otherwise, there isn't a future. You know, certainly not for people that want to either catch fish or see fish. I don't know what we're going to eat in years to come. Who knows? Might be something different. Now, I'll keep it brief, but I love Cabbage Tree Bay with a passion. It's not a marine park, but it is a no-take aquatic reserve. And the marine biodiversity and the fish density in Cabbage Tree Bay is unmatched anywhere else in Sydney. And Cabbage Tree Bay works, and it works on lots of levels. It works because originally we were able to get it across the line. As Judy said, we had some fights in those early days. And there was a lot of self-interest there. And we had a council that did run a spearfishing school. You know, and said, oh, no, there's nothing there, there's no fish, etc., etc., etc. We had battles on our hands, but eventually we got it across the line, and thank goodness we did, because there's more big fish and a greater diversity of fish species there than anywhere else. And Cabbage Tree Bay is what? It's like a square kilometre, isn't it? It's like a blip. In the, in, you know, it's, it's, you know there's, there's not much of it. But it is a safe area, and we spoke about this earlier, for divers, snorkelers, and swimmers. And recently on TripAdvisor, which is you know, as independent as you can probably get, it was voted the number one beach in New South Wales. So sorry about the main beach at Manly, which we used to think was number one, and Bondi, which was you know, number two or three or whatever. But that's the extraordinary result, isn't it? So it is truly a draw card for international and interstate visitors. It's made a big difference. You know, protecting that very small area has made a massive difference. Imagine what you could do if you could protect large parts of Sydney Harbour. Not the whole thing, but just little bits to give these fish and everything else a chance. 
So here's a little snapshot of a few of the things we see there. But rather than talk, let's have a video. So thank me, thank John. That's that's uh, that's 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 John's video. So let's have a look. Who's going to win? If we're going to have some winners, let's have a look. Well, first of all, it's obviously our fish and all their buddies, because they're now safe. We've got their snorkelers, swimmers, and all the water users. We've got schools and education facilities. We saw that Will was doing some fantastic work. We spend a lot of time running marine programs down at Shelley Beach because the schools can take people snorkeling and there's something for them to see. Because when you're studying fish, it makes a big difference if you can see fish. <laughs> local business is obviously a winner. Even our local council, God bless them, um, benefit from this deal. Obviously the environment's the winner, but as importantly and probably more important than anything, future generations are the winners. Because if we don't do something, I don't want to be alarmist, but I see it just disappearing. It's common sites that we die that aren't protected year after year get worse and worse and worse. We don't see more fish, we see less. And the whole environment suffers because of that. So, we're all going to win. So, as we can see, we're all going to win when we create marine sanctuaries. Overwhelmingly, the majority of people want them. You know, the benefits to the environment are indisputable. They're great for business. And all of this stuff isn't smoke and mirrors. It's all fact. So there's really just one simple thing remains for the decision makers. And that's just do it. Let's not talk about it. Okay. I mean, we saw it. How long has it been going on? I mean, Judy's got half the environment centre filled full of it. You know, how long has this been going on? So really, all I want to say at the end of the day is, thanks for listening. You can absolutely 100% count on the Dive Industry of Association support and my own personal support. So let's get it done and let's join up these dots that we're talking about. You know, let's have this map as it should be. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot.